Top of Zion Law School. Welcome to the Free Astro Theology course. Um, our textbook is The Gospel and the Zodiac, The Secret Truth About J.C. the Christ Figure. The author is Bill Darlison. All right, the link to the free PDF is in the description area of this video along also there are links to the uh, many of the books that I have written uh, so by the way thanks everyone for your support those of you who are uh, buying my my books those of you who have subscribed uh, to the 101 ancient ivory app class all right so thanks I appreciate your support uh, one of the best decisions that you could have made for yourself okay so let's go ahead and get started y'all we're uh, on page 23 give me one second I'm doing two things at one time these last couple of days I, I've been eating donuts I don't know if y'all can see that I'm losing weight I've been trying to lose weight So I don't eat as much as I used to, and uh, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite quite satisfied with it. But I got a taste for donuts these last for a while. So I'm a. Well, as I do this, I'm going to eat donuts again. <laughs> you don't like it, hey, that's tough. But uh, I'm doing this to enjoy myself. So you can roll with me. If, it, if it's uh, too much for you, uh, I'll check you out on the next one. I understand. All right? These donuts are, they're actually... They're actually good. Usually I don't like donuts from uh, in foreign countries. I don't think I've ever been to a country where I like their pastries. But I like these donuts. So page 23. Open your books to page 23. We're on Pisces. This is our last zodiac sign, y'all. Page 23, Pisces. Main incidents, betrayal. We covered that. Suffering, sacrifice, death, and resurrection. So we covered that in terms of how it is expressed in nature, celestially, and in human relations. We went through that, right? Also, we discussed it in terms of the Christ figure, uh, his alleged life of betrayal, suffering, sacrifice, death, and resurrection. Okay, and we made the correlations to it in astrology. So the zodi zodiacal key words, self-sacrifice, hidden things, dreams, Suffering, compassion, secret enemies, self-undoing, and deception. So we cover most of these, but I uh, self-undoing. Let's see where we are. Let's see where we are at. Okay. Let's just uh, continue. Remember, we're in the subheading, the yearly cycle, from Pisces to Aries. If y'all don't, if you missed that, or if you don't remember. Go back and watch yesterday's video. The, the, uh, uh, who is the man with the jar of water? The one right before this one. Okay. 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 All right, y'all. So we left off talking about how the king 
if the king got old or some infirmity, the king would uh, be sacrificed, killed. Okay, you guys remember that on page 212. So we're gonna pick back up from that point. You should keep in mind that JC is said to be king of the Jews. So here's another, uh, another uh, association to uh, this mythological uh, ritual. Okay, so let's read the footnote. I'll read the sentence in the first paragraph and then I'll go down and read the sentence, okay? So page 212, scholars. Okay, it reads, this is a Piscean notion. notion. What he's talking about is what I just mentioned. A Piscean notion. This is referring to when the king gets sick, ill, or he's, you know, losing his mind, he's deteriorating. So the people will kill him, bring in a new king, they have a new start. Okay? That's Piscean. Why? Because that's cruel, right? Why do you have to kill him? Why not just replace him? When he gets to the point that he can't function in his office. Okay? So let's read the last sentence of the paragraph. This is a Piscean notion since from the king's death comes new life and vigor to the people. Y'all see that? From the king's death comes new, new life and vigor and power to the people. So when JC dies, the people now get a new opportunity to live forever. Not in a weak, sickly, infirm state where, or even if they're healthy, right? You eventually you get old and you expire. But at, J, at, but at JC's death, you know, he's the king, you will never get old and you will never die. Y'all see, so the story uh, matches up, they're parallel stories. And Mark preserves the potent symbol in his account of JC's crucifixion. JC is crucified as a king then there's a footnote, right? Remember we read Mark chapter 15, verse 17. I'll go ahead and do it again. They put a purple robe on him. Y'all know purple is for, for uh, royal royalty kings. They twisted together a crown of thorns. So the, the crown of thorns, right? This is, uh, remember, that those are the rays of the suns, right? The rays of the sun projecting outward the rays of the sun. In the paintings, you see JC with the halo, which is the sun. But the crown of thorns, that's the rays of the sun projecting out. Okay? So these are the solar deities. All right, clear? But he has a crown, and kings wear a crown. Okay, so he is a solar deity king. Okay, and they began to call out, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again they struck him on the head with the staff and spat on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. So that's Mark 15, 17 through 19. Now let's go to the footnote. There's a hint of the dis member king motif okay so that's what we talked about earlier right that custom practice of killing the king in the strange incident of cutting off the high priest servant's ear which occurs as jc is being arrested that's mark 14 47. mark tells us very little but john gives us a very telling detail. So John gives more details. So when we read in John, this is John 18.10, y'all check it yourself. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, 
drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. And then we see in parentheses it says, the servant's name was Malchus. The servant's name was Malchus. So now, remember, the footnote started off, there's a hint of a dismembered king in the motif. Well, Malchus, the servant who got his ear cut off, listen to what his name means. It continues, Luke alone tells us that J.C. healed the man. J.C. healed Malchus. This is at Luke chapter 22, 51. Quote, unquote, Malchus comes from the Hebrew word Melech, which means king. Y'all tell me if that's a coincidence. Is that a coincidence? All of these coincidences, y'all? So the king, like Osiris in the Egyptian myth, so the king, like Osiris in the Egyptian myth, is partially dismembered. Remember they cut up Osiris, I think, into 12 pieces or something like that. But, is uh, not they, but I think it was Set, his brother, Okay, but it is made whole again by the power of Christ. Y'all see it? This is on page 212. Okay, so at some point, scholars, we have to give way to our reasoning mind. The, the beliefs have to give way to our reasoning logical mind, to our analytical mind. All of this cannot be coincidence. Okay, especially that it's hidden, especially because it's hidden, all right? You need to ask yourself, why did they hide it if it's just coincidence, okay? The reason is you're on the outside. You're supposed to be the human resource. That's right, the cattle, the chattel, the debtor, and, the, and those who are in the inside of the house this, uh, the Brotherhood of Saturn and other secret societies, these are the masters, the creditors. They're on the inside of the house and they're living off of you due to your ignorance, due to your lack of knowledge about astrology and mythology. A lot of that mythology is real stuff, y'all and your lack of, of knowledge about nature and natural law and who you are, okay? So they're able to game you, right? You're looking to them as your gods and they're gaming you, living off of you. All right, church Circes, right? Y'all remember the story about Pilate asking J.C. if he was a king of the Jews. J.C. never denied it. He just kept quiet, right? Yes or no? Read Mark chapter 15, verse 26 to remind you of that. These motifs reflect the second deacon of Pisces, Cephas, the second de deacon of Pisces. Is Cephas a deacon? Well, Pisces is a constellation. A constellation is a group of many stars. A deacon is a constellation that's located next door. Like, okay, like if you live in a house or an apartment, somebody next door to you, that's a deacon. Okay, <clears throat> so the constellation next to Pisces is Cephas, a 
And guess what Cephas is, or guess who Cephas is? Cephas is a king. Cephas is a king. Take a look. Okay, y'all. That image that you just saw is on page 213. The constellation Cephas, which is located next door to Pisces, therefore it's called a deacon, Cephas the king. Okay? Note this, going back to page 212. See if this is a glorious king, wearing his royal robe, bearing aloft a branch or a scepter, and having his head, having on his head a crown of stars. That's size page page 85. Does that sound familiar, y'all? Does it sound familiar? Here is the figure of a glorious queen, king, that's Cephas, <clears throat> wearing his royal robe, bearing along a branch or scepter, got a scepter in his hand, and having on his hand, head, notice, notice, a crown of stars. Sound familiar? The king is both victim and redeemer. A notion which says Liz Green, quote unquote, is very close to the heart of Pisces. She goes on to write, whether the individual Piscean identifies more with the victim and becomes a victim for his whole life has dismembered or whether he identifies more with the Redeemer who is the Savior of suffering. How many of y'all knew that? That Pisces, the zodiac sign Pisces is associated with either being a victim, a dismembered victim, a dismembered victim. Now remember the king when he's damaged, injured physically or mentally, you got to kill him, according to the custom. All right, and this custom existed before there ever was a Christianity. How many of y'all knew that? Pisces. Pisces people. <laughs> or let's just say Pisces. Pisces identifies with either being a victim, a dismembered victim, or a redeemer. Is not JC a dismembered victim and a redeemer? Well, we know for sure the soldier who got his ear cut off, uh, Malchus, which means in Hebrew, Malak, Malak means king, we know he was dismembered. But when you put someone on a cross or a stake and you drive nails through him, didn't you just dismember his hands? Didn't you just cause him, you dismembered uh, the uh, muscles, the bones, the tissues, the nerves? You dismembered it, right? You just drove a stake through it. Also his legs. Some of y'all say he was hung. Okay, so isn't he a victim? Y'all? And y'all ever think about this? Think about this. You know, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in, in North America, they would hang our people to this day. And they still dismember them, don't they? They cut off their penis. Y'all know that? The testicles, they eat the body parts, they cut off the fingers, they eat the body parts. 
So isn't it interesting? Do you think they did that? <clears throat> Do you think that may have been, I, I'm just speculating. Do you think that they may have done that or wrote that in the, bio, in the uh, biography of J.C. the Christ figure that they cut off his penis, cut off his fingers, they ate his body parts? Makes you wonder if the story was originally written that way and they, they hid it. I mean, who knows, right? But we certainly know that that's what they do to us, right? Okay, so now we see in Pisces, we see the concept of a king, a victim, even being dismembered, and we see the king being a redeemer. JC was all of those things. So now we see another match between the mythology, the astrology, and the made up biographical story about J.C. the Christ figure, okay? This is the astro theology, since we're dealing with uh, customs and practices of other groups of people. Well, we're in the area of philology, right? We're dealing with philology now, clear? So there is a suffering redeemer a suffering redeemer. JC is a suffering redeemer also. Oh, here's another one. Here's another one. Let's go to this, page 212, the first paragraph. The first paragraph, the idea of the quote unquote suffering, suffering redeemer is present also in the first deacon of Pisces. So the first deacon of Pisces is Andromeda. Okay, the second deacon of Pisces is Cephas the king. The first deacon of Pisces is Andromeda. Okay, Andromeda. So Pisces lives next door to Cephas the king and Andromeda, okay? Pisces has two deacons, two constellations located next door to Pisces. That's all it's saying. <clears throat> nope. Page 213 now, y'all. The name Andromeda means quote unquote man ruler let me repeat it the name Andromeda means quote unquote man ruler man ruler all right man ruler and then in parentheses <clears throat> it has king question mark queen question mark let me show you Can y'all see it? Everybody see that? So let me show you Andromeda. Andromeda is on page 215. It reads, okay, figure 27, page 215. Andromeda on her virgin cross the maiden hung. Okay, y'all. Is this coincidence? Is it coincidence? The constellation Andromeda is crucified.
Okay, Andromeda means man ruler. And then king question mark, queen question mark, to which the Latins frequently added mulier cantinata, the woman chain, the woman chains. The myth of Andromeda bears so many parallels with the story of the crucifixion and resurrection of J.C. that it is worth quoting the first part of, Manil of Manilius version at length. Y'all got that? Did you hear what he just said? Page 213. I'm going to read this. We're looking for parallels between Andromeda's crucifixion and J.C. the Christ figure's crucifixion. Okay, so let's see if what the author said is true. There follows the constellation of Andromeda, <clears throat> whose golden light, okay, gold, sun, solar deity, appears <clears throat> in the rightward sky when the fishes have risen to 12 degrees. The fishes, that's Pisces. So when Pisces have, has risen to 12 degrees, if you look up in the sky, you'll see Andromeda. So the constellation Andromeda, you'll see a golden light, okay, at 12 degrees. That's Andromeda. That's what this is saying, okay? You have to look rightward. When you look rightward in the sky, you'll see Pisces, okay? Pisces has ridden 12 degrees, the golden, the golden stars, okay? Once on a time, the sin of cruel parents caused her to be given up for sacrifice. Okay, now she was sacrificed, JC was sacrificed, right? She was crucified, JC was crucified, crucified. When a hostile sea in all its strengths burst upon every shore, the land was shipwrecked in the flood. And what had been a king's domain was now an ocean. Isn't that interesting? All of this water again. All of this water. Okay? Now y'all remember water relates to emotion. Okay? So if it's a if it's a, a water storm, a raging flood, that would be what? Raging emotions. All right? So what else can we get from this? It's a hostile sea, hostile sea of people. Okay, like the, the Jewish crowds who wanted to have JC killed. A hostile sea, a hostile sea of people. Okay? All in a all in an emotional upheaval because they were provoked by the Jewish priest, as the story goes, right? As the story goes, the priest got the people all riled up, so it was a raging sea, if you will. All right, let's continue. From those ills, but one price of redemption was proposed. Y'all got that? So now there is a redemption price. The redemption price in the gospel story is perfect blood as a ransom sacrifice for all sinners in the house of Yasharala, if that's your doctrine, or for the world, whatever your doctrine is. Okay, it is still a ransom of a perfect man to save all other men once and for all time okay for those ills but one price of redemption was proposed surrender of Andromeda to the raging man yes to the raging man for a monster to devour, to devour her tender limbs this was her bridal, revealing the people's hurt by submitting to her own. She is amid her tears, adorned as victim. JC was 
adorned as a victim, right? For the beast and Don's attire prepared for no such troth as this. And the corpless funeral of the living maiden is hurried on its way. Then as soon as the procession reaches the shore of the tumultuous sea, her soft arms are stretched out on the rocks. They bound her feet to crags and cast chains upon her. And there to die on her virgin cross. Y'all see that? JC was also a virgin, right? He never had a wife, never had sex. So we have two sexual virgins here being sacrificed on a cross as a ransom, to pay a ransom, right? Okay, and there to die on her virgin cross, the maiden hang, hung. Then there's some, uh, some Latin, I'm gonna skip that. Even in the hour of sacrifice, she yet preserves a modest maid. Her very sufferings become her, for gently inclining her snow white neck. She seems in full possession of her liberty. In other words, she's there because she wants to be. She's in full possession of her liberty. liberty. She could have got off that cross and walked away, but she chose not to. JC says that he could have got off that cross and walked away, but he also chose not to. I hope everyone sees all of these parallels. The folds of her robe stripped from her shoulders. They put the purple robe on the Christ figure, right? Then they took it off. She had on a robe and her robe came off. Okay, so she slipped. So the folds of her robe slipped from her shoulders and fell from her arms and her streaming locks covered her body. This is in Millennius GP Gould, page 345 to 47. All right, now y'all can deny these parallels if you want to, okay? But if you are honest with yourself, you see that there is a, a lot of similarities or parallels between the story of Andromeda's crucifixion and JC's crucifixion. Okay? Now, Perseus, returning from his destruction of Medusa, notices the chain Andromeda falls in love with her, saves her from the dreadful sea monster, and eventually marries her. These images of dying that others might live, Christ died so that you might live, according to the story. But y'all know Christ made his escape, right? He, got, he never got on the cross. You'll find that in the devil's pulpit. Go read it. It was Simon, most likely Simon the Cyrenian, who was sacrificed, okay? <clears throat> All right, so these images of dying that others might live of a virgin cross, of the innocent victim, of defeating the monster. Who's the monster? Satan the devil. Christ defeated Satan. Even the parental sin or the original sin, Christ defeated the original sin. Why? Because he was tested according to the story and he remained sinless so he even defeated the adamic sin okay remember the enemy who was supposed to be satan the devil was trying to get christ to sin all right he even offered as the story goes christ all the kingdoms of the world but christ remained faithful don't y'all remember the story all right, even the parental sin, that's the Adamic sin, the original sin, are all part of the Jesus story and have had a profound influence 
on later Christian theology. All of them are prefigured mythology of the constellation Andromeda. Page 214. The constellation Andromeda tells a story very similar to the crucifixion, well no, to the passion, the suffering, and the crucifixion of J.C. the Christ figure. Hence, astro theology, or what? Worship of the stars, but y'all don't know it. It's been hidden from you. So those of you who are walking around and saying that astrology, and you know nothing about astrology, is evil and wicked, and you're praying to J.C. the Christ figure, and you're fully, fully engaged, fully devoted to Catholicism, to Christ, all, all of its, all Christianity, whichever one you're in, Hebrew Israelitism. Well, guess what? You are, you are worshiping the stars, and you don't even know it. You don't even know it, and they'll tell you to 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 your face that you're not because they don't want you to know. And then they'll turn around and use nature and natural law against you. Why? Because they know that you have, most of you, because of your training or lack of training, you have no discipline, you have no will. You have no willpower. Okay, and you're manifesting to be who they want you to be in terms of how you feel every day. Your moods, your emotions, your goals, your aspirations, they're in complete control of you. And they're doing it through nature. And so, so for those of you who refuse to learn, you'll continue to get the effects or to experience the effects of the causes that they're putting out on you. And there's really nothing else I can say about it. You know, I mean, uh, I can't force you <laughs> to use your analytical mind. I cannot uh, uh, force you to accept the evidence That's something you have to do for yourself. What, the only thing I can do is give you the information. Okay? And that's what I'm doing. All right? But you are responsible for you. I don't know what else you could ask for or, or need, to be honest with you. This is Andromeda. Now, y'all know, have y'all noticed the Christ figure in Christian art? is usually androgynous, right? Looks looks very feminine, long flowing hair. Well, Andromeda had long flowing hair, right? When her robe fell off, her long locks covered her body. JC looks like, like he's gender neutral, okay? So Andromeda here is a woman. So they made JC look like a woman. Y'all get it? They, they paint JC to look like a woman. Why? Because Andromeda is a woman. That's why. Now you see that even this feminine JC image comes from astrology. Why? Because his life reflects or is really the life or his passion and crucifixion is the passion and, cruci and crucifixion of Andromeda. Fully astrology. Okay? 
Hence, astro, celestial, astro, the stars, theology, the study of God. Y'all got it? So J.C. the Christ figure never lived and never walked on planet Earth. His story is made up from mythology, all related to the stars. Hold on. Let me scan through a little bit more, okay? Y'all read page 215. I'm trying to cover just what we need to cover to finish the book. Give me one second. There's so much good stuff in this book, y'all. You can just get lost in this. So there are other parallels. Other parallels if y'all continue in this book, okay? Other pagan or mythological stories uh, that Christ, that the, that the uh, biographical story of Christ comes from that parallel it's just a lot I'm just trying to see <clears throat> what else I want to bring to your attention My mind is focused on the donut. <laughs> I can admit that. Oh, we might be done, y'all. Mm. He makes a good point. I'm going to bring it to your attention. Really good point. Page 218. Page 218. Okay, the subheading on page 218, it's the equinoctial cycle, Aries to Pisces.
Now that sounds very similar to the subheading on page 209, which is the yearly cycle. So the subheading on page 209 is the yearly cycle from Pisces to Aries. And then on page 218, it's the equinoctial cycle, Aries to Pisces, okay? Piscean themes are not restricted to the final chapters of this gospel. Now, y'all remember that the equinox, the vernal equinox, the spring equinox, and then there is the fall equ equinox, okay? So this is the equinoctial cycle. So this is what? Justice, right? 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of night. So whenever you see equinox, equinoctial, think equal, or think justice, think equity and fairness, all right? Then that way you, you always have the concept correctly in your mind. So Piscean themes are not restricted to the final chapters of Mark, of Mark's gospel. The whole gospel, y'all got that? <laughs> The Piscean themes are not restricted to the final chapters of this gospel. He's talking about Mark's gospel. The whole gospel, with some justification, can be called a Piscean document. Y'all got that? The whole gospel expresses duality, intentional deceit, intentional deception, lack, Lack of consistency. And what was the other one? Lack of, uh, it's at the tip of my tongue. Lack of consistency. Well, let me just express it in different words. Lack of consistent, consistency and a poor will. Poor will. Give up too quick. Okay? The whole gospel can, with some justification, be called a Piscean document. Earlier on, early on we read of the apostles becoming quote unquote fishers of men. Okay, Pisces is fish. Two fish swimming in the opposite direction. So one north, one south, and they're connected by a rope, meaning they have some duties and obligations to each other. Okay? The, in other words, they cannot be separated. Okay? or what one does affects the other, however you want to look at it. The multitudes are fed on bread and fish. So y'all know bread would be what? Virgo, because Virgo is carrying a stalk of wheat or corn. Okay, and Virgo, I believe, is opposite, is at the opposite end of Pisces. Let me check it. Pisces, hold on, give me a second. Let me check Pisces, yeah. So Virgo is at the opposite end of Pisces. Is that a coincidence, y'all? Pisces, well, actually it's gonna be something like this. Well, this is polarity. This is the law of polarity, okay? Virgo, and then the opposite end of a straight line, the, the sign, the zodiac sign at the opposite end, I'm sorry, Pisces, and the zodiac sign at the opposite end would be Virgo. Actually, it would be different because Pisces is negative. So Pisces would be at the negative pole and Virgo would be at the positive pole. Y'all see that? Everybody see that? Virgo is at the positive pole. This is the woman with the stalk of wheat. This is the harvest. So that's the positive pole. Pisces, the two fish, fish live underwater. There's duality, intentional deception, right? They don't have a strong resolve. That was the word I was looking for. They give up easy and they're not consistent. These are all low vibrational behaviors and mindset, okay? Clear? Pisces is the covenant of labor, low vibrational. Virgo is the covenant of grace high vibrational. Everybody see that? So 
JC fed the people with two fish. That's Pisces. That's low vibration. He ain't fed them with two fish. He fed them with religion, religious doctrine, low vibrational. Okay, and five loaves of bread. That's telling you. Zodiac. Y'all think that's a coincidence? That Pisces is here, and then at the exact opposite end, if you draw a straight line down to the next Zodiac, it's uh, Virgo. You think that's a coincidence? Absolutely not. No way. No way. Okay. Let's continue. And the Piscean virtue of self-sacrifice is constantly extolled. Okay, y'all? Other quote-unquote fishy stories can be found el elsewhere in the Gospels. For example, Matthew has the curious story of the coin in the fish's mouth. <clears throat> the money in the fish's mouth. <clears throat> Let me say it again. Matthew has the story of the coin or the money in the fish's mouth. Who's the fish? JC told the apostles, I will make you fishers of men. Okay? So when they catch the fish and they open up the fish's mouth, what's in the mouth of your of, of the fish, scholars? Money. Your 10% tithe that you pay monthly. The money that you give for the building fund, for this project, for that project. Yeah, you're the fish. And they open up your mouth and they take the money. Y'all got that? The good ship Jesus. They ship you right out of natural law, right out of your jurisdiction, into religion, and then open up your mouth and take out money. How are they opening up your mouth? Through what? Theft of your birthright. So they can escheat you. They use the lawyers to attorn you, the attorneys to attorn you. And then they hit you with bills of attainder and bills of pains and sufferings. In other words, they put you in a civilly dead status. Okay, and then they start making you pay. Mortgage, traffic ticket, utility bill, things that are your birthright that are free to you. That's right. You have been caught in the net of Christianity and every month they open up your mouth and they take out that coin. Okay, so Matthew has the curious story of the coin in the fish's mouth. This is at Matthew chapter 17, verse 24 through 27. And John tells us of the miraculous catch of fish. Y'all see that? Yeah, they want to catch fish. They want to get as many members as they can. This is the problem with the Hebrew Israelites. Yeah, that's the problem with the Hebrew Israelites. They all trying to grow their memberships. Why? So that they can get into your mouth and take out that money, take out them coins. And they care more about that than they do trying to build anything or cooperate with each other. And what's the excuse they use? Doctrine. You got the wrong doctrine. Or your doctrine is different than mine, so we can't work together. But they will all say, they will all say that the white man is genociding us out, is oppressing us, and that we need the Most High, JC, to come crack the sky and save us. Well, if that's the case and they admit, they admit that something needs to be done immediately, why can't they put the doctrine aside? Why can't they put the doctrine aside and work together, cooperate together? I tell you why. 
because it's about catching a fish and reaching in that fish, fish's mouth and extracting those coins. Okay, so they want to see you oppressed. They want to see you have a reason to fall down on your knees and pray. Yeah, they want that. They want you tired, overworked, problems in your house. They want that. Because the more oppressed you are, the more troubled you are, the more you're going to go pray. And the more, quote unquote, sinning you do, they know the more you're going to try to buy your way out of it. Okay? So the worse you, the, the worse your condition, the more money they make. Y'all see that? The more money they make because you need to be saved. Because you don't know that you're your own savior. You've been totally disconnected by natural law and you're worshiping these external deities, not just JC the Christ figure or the Tetragrammaton, but your religious leaders. And I'm not saying something bad about you, but if you feel bad, if it stings, if it burns, I'm talking to you. You have to break free emotionally you've got to break that spell okay you must you must listen to your analytical intelligent mind all right stop being afraid to think to analyze so let's continue <clears throat> Such stories like we just read, y'all. Now remember, y'all, you're nothing more than a fish. You're nothing more than a fish. Once they get you in that religion, every month, taking them coins out, taking them coins out. All right, that's all you are. Keep that in mind, you are a fish a lowly fish in their eyes. Such stories point to the imminent quote unquote new age, the age of Pisces, which was potentially a time of collective spiritual transformation. Potentially as the equinoctial point moving backwards through the zodiac Okay, so that's the uh, uh, <clears throat> the procession of the uh, of the equinoxes that I talked about. Y'all can read about that in the Forgotten Language of the Stars. That's in this book. Okay, so go follow up on that. "Quote unquote," passed over from Aries to Pisces. Let me read it again. The equinoctial point moving backwards through the zodiac. "Quote unquote," passed over from Aries. To Pisces, the spiritual symbols of the people would be changed. Y'all got that? So when a zodiacal age changes, the religion changes. This is what he's talking about. All right. So during during Taurus, the zodiac age of Taurus, uh, which was Taurus when they worship Apis the bull. And it was transitioning into Aries, right, with Moses and the people being led out of Egypt. Remember, they built the golden calf, but the zodiacal age had changed in, into Aries. Now it's the ram and the chauffeur. So the global religion changed. The globally dominant religion changed. Okay, from the Egyptian uh, mythological, and y'all know that doesn't make any sense, right? <clears throat> because Egypt, well, at least according to what scholars say, Egypt began about 10,000 BCE, at least the currently known Egypt. When you look at the, the line of pharaohs, it goes back to, I think, about 10,000 BCE, according to science, modern scientists. But you can't believe the dates, right? <clears throat> 
So that would be at least four, at least four zodiacal ages. Right, each zodiacal age, approximately 2,500 years. Right? So three or four zodiacal ages up until the point of uh, Moses, something like that. Okay? So if this theory holds true that religion, worshiping external deities, the symbolism or the, the idols, if all of these things changed, why don't we see it reflected going back to 10,000 BCE? I'll tell you why, because religion is a new phenomenon. Okay? All of this is a new phenomenon. A couple hundred years old at best. Y'all see my point? All right. So the spiritual symbols of the people would change. So when during Taurus, when the Israel, when the house of Yasharala were, was in Egypt, the spiritual symbol was the bull. When they left Egypt, the religion changed, according to the story, to uh, Judaism. Now the religious symbol is what? The ram, the ram's horn. But when Aries ended, the religious symbol became what? The fish cross okay y'all but consistent through all of that are what the solar deities the sun everybody worship the sun according to uh, these scholars but I can assure you our ancestors never worshiped the sun they may have acknowledged the sun and, and its role that it plays but that's very different from worshiping the sun okay so that was remixed into worshiping the sun. Okay? Obvious, clear as day, at least in my mind. <clears throat> okay, so let's continue. The spiritual symbols of the people would change 2,000 years earlier. Oh, he's saying it right here. 2,000 years earlier, the ram or lamb of Aries had entered human consciousness as the symbol of the age of Aries. This great shift in spiritual awareness had been celebrated by the Jews. Now y'all remember, there was no such thing as a Jew during the time of Moses, according to the timeline, because Judaism began during or shortly after Babylonian captivity, okay? That's a religion, not a bloodline people. This great shift in spiritual awareness had been celebrated by the Jews in the Passover, in which the lamb was ritually consumed. All right, let me say it again. There was no such thing as a Jew until during or shortly after Babylonian captivity, Jew uh, Judaism is a religion. It's not a bloodline people. Anybody can join it. Okay, in fact, it is a remix of the customs, principles, and heritage of the bloodline people or the house of Yasharala. Okay, it is a remix of the natural people and their lifestyle. Okay, that's what Judaism is. And when did it begin? During or shortly after Babylonian captivity. In Mark's time, a new Passover was imminent. And this would necessitate a new ritual, right? Because one zodiac, because Aries ended and Pisces begins. Okay? This time there would be no lamb. Since the age of Aries was over, the lamb has been slain. So JC was called the lamb. Okay, y'all got that? JC was called the lamb, indicating the end of the age of Aries. Astrological. But certain elements of the old ritual 
their meaning transform would remain. Okay, so some things that they did in the ritual, the Passover, the slaughtering of the lamb, some things that they did in the ritual remains in Christianity today. That's what he's saying. Okay, in every new age, there is the idea of breaking with the past, symbolized in the original ceremony by the unleavened bread. Okay, so the unleavened bread in the, in the Lord's evening meal symbolizes stop doing what we did in the past in terms of religious rituals. We're going to stop that. Okay, why? Because leaven, leaven what? Leaven makes the bread grow. It makes it rise. Okay? It's yeast. The yeast begin to multiply. The bread rises. Okay, so there's a next generation of yeast makes the bread rise. So if it's unleavened, there's no next generation. So those elements of the ritual stop. They're ended. Over, no more. Okay, no mas. In every, in every new age, there is the idea of breaking with the past, symbolized in the original ceremony by the unleavened bread. There's a footnote. It was customary to leaven a batch of bread with a piece of dough from an earlier batch. So you see, you see that's the next generation. So there was continual continuity from one batch to the next. So that's the next generation, right? Unleavened bread destroyed this continuity. In other words, no more is over. Okay, so let's continue. This would remain as part of the new celebration, but it would take an added significance representing Virgo, the maiden with a sheath of corn or wheat in her hand. With these qualities complement, let me repeat that, whose qualities complement those of the polar opposite Pisces. So this is what I just told you. He said polar opposite. Okay, that's a law of polarity. That's a hermetic law. Okay, right here in the Gospels, also in the Zodiac. Pisces, low vibrational pole. Draw a straight line. So you have the Zodiac, it's a circle, right? It's a wheel, a pathway, the Maserat, the Zoat. Draw a line from Pisces, straight down, It'll end where? Where will it connect? It will connect at the polar opposite end, which is Virgo. That cannot be a coincidence. Let's continue. Thus, y'all see the point? Y'all see the point? The author is talking about uh, rituals and ceremonies that will, that will continue. Let me read it again. Let me read it again. In every new age, there is an idea of breaking with the past, symbolized in the original story of the unleavened bread. So if the bread has no leaven, that means the yeast, the bread is not going to rise. Right? There's no yeast in it. So there's not going to be a next generation. Now the custom that we read in the footnote is that we would take the some dough, some dough from a previous loaf of bread. They take a piece of it and put it with new dough to leaven it. Okay? So they would impregnate it with yeast and then that yeast would grow. That's the next generation. So there's not going to be a, a next generation because they, they're not putting the yeast, okay? So it's over. Okay? That part of the ritual is over. It's not going to continue anymore. This would remain as part of the new celebration, but would take on added significance. Okay, so what's the added, added significance? Representing Virgo, the maiden with the sheaf of wheat, whose qualities complement those of the polar opposite Pisces. Thus, the bread of Virgo, thus the bread of Virgo's harvest is linked with the Christ, quote unquote, divine. See John 15. Now again, Pisces. Pisces. Okay. 
There's no leavening of the dough. It's unleavened. So that's the end. <clears throat> that's the end of what they did in Aries. Okay? The end of what they did in Aries. But, but there's still dough. There's just no leaven. What's the dough made of? Wheat. What zodiac sign is wheat? Virgo. The woman with the stalk of corn or wheat in her hand. And it just so happens that at the polar opposite end of Pisces on the zodiac wheel is Virgo. Now that is not a coincidence. What's the difference between the dough and Virgo is unleavened. The, the dough in Virgo is unleavened. So there's a cutting off of the of the things that they did in Aries. This is what this is telling you. Okay, so we're dealing with philology. All right. And so, thus, bread of Virgo's harvest is linked with the Christ, quote unquote, divine. See John 15. Wine, symbolic of all celebration, which gladdens our heart but takes away our will, like all drugs, Piscean. <laughs> now we've been talking about will all day, not all day, but for the last 10, 15, 20 videos. The will what? Masculine energy and will, will power. Right? The overtaking of your I, your I am, your will, your masculine energy, it being overtaken by what? The I or the masculine energy of someone else or someone else's I, someone else's masculine energy, their will collaborating with your feminine energy to produce moods, thoughts, emotions, and behaviors that are not yours, but you're not aware that they're not yours. All Piscean. I just read it to you. Okay? And the author is liking it to drinking a lot of alcohol or taking drugs. How it takes the will away. Hence, Pisces takes the will away. Now you should have an idea why the Catholic Church calls itself the Catholic Church. Because what does Circe do? Circe lures people into her house. Circe means church in modern English shows. Uh, Circe, Kirk, Kirky, Empress Roe or Rice, Shalawama. Kirky, Circe means church in modern English. This is a, a Greek deity who would lure people into her house. Uh, amazing, deliciously smelling food, amazing uh, perfume smells coming out of her house, beautiful music, all types of uh, things that appeal to your senses, beautiful things to look at, get you to come in her house, and now she takes control of your mind. And then she begins to live off of you. The same way church gets you to engage them, read their literature, go into their uh, buildings, by what? Telling you stories of love and acceptance, JC loves you. JC's gonna do this for you. He forgives you for everything you did. He's gonna give you this in the future. He's gonna give you that in the future. Somebody loves you. These beautiful stories. You go there, you meet people. They're nice to you in the beginning because they want you to join. They feel it's a duty to be nice to you. So now you're getting the Cersei game work on you. And then once you get in there, they steal your mind and steal your will. All of a sudden, you're living for the religion. They're taking coins out of your mouth. Right? Just like this, the, the, the verse says uh, in Matthew 17, 24, 7. Right? The curious, well, the, the curious story, I'm on page 218. The curious story of the, co of the coins in the fish's mouth, Matthew 17, 24 through seven. And that's what's happening to you. All astrological, all 
having its root in nature. Okay, uh, mental gender. All right, mental gender. Y'all go read up on that. Learn about the Hermetic Laws. This process here is mental gender, stealing your will. Okay? Mythologically, it belongs to Dionysus, who is Bacchus in Roman mythology, god of wine, who died and was resurrected. It is this new wine. The wine of the new age, which J.C., the Christ figure, will drink in the kingdom of God. Y'all got that? The wine of the new age means taking you out of your right mind and putting you in bondage. That's the new wine. Just as wine will take your will if you drink too much, okay? You get into this religion, this Christianity, it's also going to have the same effect on you. It's going to take your will. And you're going to be a minion for the religion. Self-sacrificing, giving up everything on behalf of that religion. All right. Y'all think about what happened to Dr. Khalid Muhammad. They took care of him, right? But as soon as he had some disagreements or some misunderstandings with Farrakhan, what happened? They kicked him out kicked him out. No more income, no more Rolls Royce. And the way I heard the story, he like totally dogged him out. Wouldn't even talk to the man. But there were stories, right? There were stories. Look at, look at what happened with Malcolm X. He was assassinated. Or look at what happens with people who you know when they do something that the church doesn't like or they start thinking or reading something that their religious organization doesn't like. They throw them out. Okay, and you lose everything, including friends, family, your whole support system. And if you were working like at their headquarters or volunteering, you have nothing, no retirement, no nothing. You could have been there 20, 30 years and they throw you out with nothing. I know people who that happened to in the religion that I used to be in. All right. So in John's gospel, the last supper, uh, John chapter 13, and it says FF, contains Piscean themes, even though it is not said to be a Passover celebration. JC rises from the table, takes cloth and water and begins to wash the feet of his disciples. Why is he washing the feet, y'all? Well, I showed you. If you remember, let me let me let me be more bold. If you paid attention, if you paid attention, you will remember that Pisces are what? Pisces represent the feet. Pisces are the feet of men. Pisces represents the feet. Can y'all see it? Okay, so that's why this story is Piscean because JC is washing the feet. So all of you good Hebrew Israelites who wash the feet of your members, you are performing a Piscean or astrological ritual. Whether you know it or not, now you know. JC rises from the table, takes cloth and water, and begins to wash the feet of his disciples. The feet, as Millennius tells us, are ruled by Pisces. But the most important Piscean element of the story is the self abasement, humility, and service that JC showed. These are the virtues that were to inform the Piscean age. The whole thing, Pisces. Our collective failure to embrace them 
should leave us little speculation about the brotherhood promised by Aquarius. So the new zodiacal age, which is Aquarius, people are not going to act like brothers because they're so happy and things are just amazing. No, it's going to be a severe beat down. A severe beat down. Okay? Death and destruction until you have no choice but to cooperate <laughs> in brotherly love. <laughs> okay, y'all? But one thing is certain. As we stand on the threshold of a new age, some people say we're already in Aquarius. The symbols will change once more. So, so y'all should expect big changes in the religion. Okay? The global religion. Out with Christianity, Islam and all of that, and in with something else. Same thing that happened with the transition from Aries to uh, Pisces. This is what the author is saying. The age of fish and feet. Y'all got that? The age of fish and feet is coming to an end. Now, how many of y'all enjoy feet? What percentage of the population thinks that feet are beautiful, wonderful, can't wait to touch and hold some feet? Feet been walking on the ground in shoes all day, musty, stinky, sweaty. What about fish? How many of y'all want to sit around and hold some fish? Some funky shoes and some funky fish. But yet, yeah, this is how Christianity represents itself. The age of funky fish and funky feet is coming to an end. A new Passover is upon us and we can legitimately, if a little apprehensively, ask with Yates, what rough beast it's our come round at last slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. In other words, what's going to happen in Aquarius? Now, let's go back to the Last Supper with J.C. Washing Feet. Let me show y'all this. This is figure 28, the washing of the feet by Giotto on page 219. Y'all see it? So just in review, Pisces ruled the feet. So washing feet is a Piscean ritual. This is the zodiac, uh, a ritual uh, of Pisces. Okay, because it's washing feet. Y'all got it? All right. So there we have it, y'all. Islam to all the Moors. I'm Dr. Yasapa from Zion Law School. Be sure to support my project to, to write the book of the law in modern English and in ancient Ivory. Okay? I'll restore all of the natural law stuff like we've been going through. If you want specifics, look in the description area of this video. So I'll deal with the hermetic laws, constitutional uh, laws, as it ha uh, uh, principles as it has to do with, uh, with uh, the Zodiac and the Hermetic Laws. All of that will be restored. Jeremiah 8.8, occurrences, the lies, intentional deception, intentional deceit, all of that I will remove. So if y'all want this book to be published and made widely available, I'm asking you for your support, okay? Because I cannot fund it and write it and do everything on my own. It's a huge project okay so i need to have you all support a uh, real world rights islam <laughs> and yuck yeah funky feet and uh wohem impale writes shalawama shalawama and islam okay so it's a big project so i'm asking y'all to support it uh with your fiat or whatever else you might have uh that can help me to do it I'm not going to eat soy sauce and rice uh, and struggle on my own to do it. I'm, I'm not at that point in my life anymore where I'm willing to do it, where I'm even able to do it, to be quite honest with you now. Um, 
So anyway, thanks again for everybody who has subscribed to the one-on-one Ancient Ivory Yath course. Uh, if y'all could get that, get the subscriptions up even more, I would appreciate that greatly. Uh, it takes a lot of pressure off of me. Also, y'all are welcome to come on Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 506 The Curses course, where we break down Deuteronomy chapter 28 using linguistics and philology, okay, not religion. So I'm going to show you what the documents actually says. Also show you the astrology, the hermetic laws, everything else. Okay, I'll show you because all of it is there. All right, so you can come for free uh, first couple times, but it's not a free class, okay? But it's not expensive either. It, the price is very reasonable. Anyway, I got to run. I got links to books that I've written in the description area of this video. Buy them on zionlawschool.org. My website, don't buy them at Amazon, okay? Amazon is too expensive, all right? In other words, they take too much money. It's not even worth selling your books on Amazon. Okay, y'all. I'll see y'all on the next one.